well, it looks like the title is showing up here, so that's good. Okay, so hello everybody and thank you for joining and welcome to the stream. Um, let's see, uh, I guess I'm going to dive right in. So, uh, I am going to implement a module called Simon Shrieks, but um, before we get to the rules of the module, the first thing I want to uh, look at is the appearance of the module, because the first thing that I'm going to do is modeling. And I'm going to do this modeling in code, so this will be a bit dry in terms of mathematics and geometry. Um, I will try and keep my explanations sort of uh, easy to follow. I've got a drawing program here, uh, which I suppose I can use to, to, um, to make diagrams and what. Uh, I've got my Visual Studio, I've got a console, um, let's see. I have a blank module directory here, as in a folder with, you know, stuff. So I'm going to take a copy of this, I'm going to call this Simon Shrieks. And then inside this folder, um, which is here, Simon Shrieks. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is in my, <laughs> I still have some notes from experting for the game. I'm going to do a search and replace because I've, um, I've uh, added some, uh, you know, uh, uh, placeholders. So the module name is going to be Simon Shrieks. I want to change that in every file in... Simon Shrieks. Let's replace all of that. There are eight occurrences. I want to change the module ID to Simon Shrieks without the space. There are five occurrences of that. And finally, I have module URL, which will have a percent 20 in it for the space. And there are two occurrences of that. And now, uh, in this directory, I have two little uh, batch files. Um, the first one, our n.bat, I'll just show you what's in there. It'll simply rename certain files, which currently have names like module name stuff. Uh, so I'm going to rename these to Simon Shrieks, Simon Shrieks. Okay, so that, that did some renaming of files. And then I'll delete that batch file. And finally, I have this mk.bat. If we look at this, this has several commands, mklink slash j. Now, many of you might not know what that is. What this does is it creates a directory junction. So each of these directories here will point to some other directory somewhere else. For example, the build directory will be the mods directory of my actual game. And things like, for example, a test harness and all these things, they will point directly into the contain mod kit, which is my up-to-date copy of the official mod kit repository. So once I do that, I can then delete the batch file. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open GitHub and create a repository for this. So we have a new repository, contain Simon Shrieks. And this is a module created by, uh, unfortunately, I forgot the name of the person who came up with this idea. So I'm going to scroll up a bit. It was IF Beetle. IF Beetle uh, implemented by Timwe. So create repository. And now I'm going to copy this. And here I'm going to create a new repository. Create destination path uh, Simon Streaks. Um, I do not want to do this. I do that myself. I, f I find that to be quite buggy. The destination path, yeah, I do want to create a repository there. And now all of the files are listed here, as you can see. I'm going to click Stage All so that I can later see all of my changes. For example, if I'm going to go um, and change the license file, which currently says Timwe, so I'm going to say IF Beetle and Timwe. Let me make sure I spell your name correctly. Yep, that is correct. If I save this, then um, Source Tree will show the, show the change, changes right here. So I can stage that too. And I'm going to submit this as the first commit, even though it's not actually a module yet. OK. And I'm going to go repository add remote to add the link from the website, make that the default remote. 
Okay. Okay. And then I will do a push. Click that. Push that. Doot. Hello, Toshi. Hello, Turntrove. I'm guessing that's Mario. Close. Okay, so here, if we reload this page now, there we go. We've got our first commit. First commit. Yay! Okay, now if I go to Unity, I still have synonyms open. Let's open Simon Shrieks. Doot doot. Okay. I did not mean to open the second copy of Unity there. I need to hold on for this to import things. Hello, IF Beetle. Nice to see you. Okay. Doot, doot, doot. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, um, a few things, unfortunately, aren't uh, automatic. One of them is the scene. So I need to manually drag the module in there. And also the test harness, I mustn't forget that, so that I can test a module once I make it. And on the prefab here, the script is uh, incorrectly set in all of these variables. I have to do that every time I do a new module, but I'm okay with it, because there is not much. Now, you will notice that Unity warns me about all these directories being symbolic links, which is not quite true. They're actually directory junctions. But regardless, um, it says that using symlinks in Unity project may cause your project to become corrupted if you create multiple references to the same asset or use recursive symlinks or whatever. This is all true. So you do need to make sure that your symlinks aren't recursive. You do need to make sure that you don't open multiple Unity projects at the same time that use the same assets. I mean, for the most part, it's fine. Uh, but I think I know what they're referring to. I could go into detail, but I think this is out of, outside of the scope for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little model. So let's take a look at IF Beetle's um, um, uh, first design from, why can I not, hmm, from, why can I not search for messages from people? That used to be possible. <laughs> They've removed that. That is really weird. But okay, fine. In that case, I will just scroll up and see if I can find it myself. It was um, quite quite a bit. Okay, so here's part of the manual. So I'm definitely on the right track. Here is a PDF. I'm gonna open that. Um, and I don't think there was an actual SVG. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have Beetle. Since you're in the chat, you can probably tell me. Um, okay, now I'm straying beyond this, so let's take a look at that PDF. Yep, this is the graphic that I was thinking of, so I'm guessing that the PDF is the only place where I saw it. Jump back to present, thank you. Okay, so in this PDF, we can see that there are seven of these triangle shapes. Um, Okay, um, you can do that, but right now I don't need it. I just needed the graphic. Thank you. So we have seven of these triangle shapes. Now I'm going to do the following. Um, let's let's draw draw some diagram here. So e each of these triangles, um, obviously, is a triangle. Um, each side of the triangle abuts the side of the previous triangle, which means that the angle. Okay, so for each triangle, like say um, you have a triangle like this. Okay, so let, let's see, let's say this top left triangle is this one. Uh, the angle that we have here, let's call it theta. Uh, let's actually make that bigger. Let's actually make it even bigger. Okay, that angle, let's call it theta, is going to be, uh, is going to be one whole rotation divided by the number of fields. And we're going to make that seven, which is a you know, it's not e easily divisible, but since we're going to write it in code, we can just write 360 divided by 7. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to use... Um, hang on. Uh, no. I'm going to use this length as a yardstick 
as as a sort of default unit. So I'm going to say this has length one. Okay, so in Unity I can scale it later. So this is going to be the uh, length that I want. Um, this length here. Uh, let me make that brighter. This length here could theoretically be anything, right? If if you look at this, you could make this longer or shorter. It would change the overall shape of things, but it would not really, uh, you know, the the angle is the important part, not the length. So I'm going to, going to make that one for now as well, and I can still tweak that. In fact, no, wait, I'm going to give that a name. I'm going to call it age or height or whatever, so that I can later tweak it. So what then is this length? Oops. Let's leave that blue. And let's draw a line here and make that one red. Um, so what is this length? Well, this length, let's call it um, width, I guess, is equal to um, now, if, if we had a right angle in this triangle, then we could simply use the, um, the you know, the sine, the Soka Toa rule. But it may not be right angled, but we have two sides and an angle. So I believe that we can use the cosine rule. Now, the cosine rule is normally stated as c squared uh, equals a squared plus b squared minus 2, 2ab cos theta. Okay? And in our case, so c squared is the side that is opposite the theta, so that's our w. Um, and a and b are the, the sides on either side of the angle, so one of them is 1, 1, and the other one is h, h. So if we want to... Oh, right, okay, so we already have a formula for w, so that's it. So it's actually just uh, the square root of all of that. There we go. Whoops, I pressed F1 and that opened a help page. I did not want that. Um, sans, um, what aspect is this including? I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I'm uh, starting to make the whole module. So I'm right now I'm planning the modeling, which I do entirely in code. So there's going to be a lot of mathematics and geometry in this. So. Uh, let's open the Catane stuff uh, project, which, which I created, which has lots and lots of code for lots and lots of modules. Most of these are module names, as you can see, uh, except for program.cs, which is where the, uh, the one that I'm currently working on. Uh, so I'm going to create a new class and a new file, give it a method called do models. Um, and I'm going to go straight to Simon Sings and copy some of the stuff from here. I'm going to copy all of the usings. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make this a static class. I'm going to make this a public void. Uh, and I'm going to... I'm going to copy one of these lines here. So I'm going to write to Simon Shrieks assets models button. So I'm going to start by making a button, and here's our method for the button. Okay, now let me make sure that this um, folder exists. Models, it does exist. Uh, it has the component, which is the mod module background, and it has this, which I'm guessing I probably won't need, but I'll take care of that later. Let's see what you guys have to say. Hey, Livio, how are you? Um, so is it more of a math-like module rather than things involving piano? No, 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 no. The, the module itself it doesn't um, involve math, uh, not not to a lot of degree. What I what I was saying is that creating the code that generates the models for the module that will involve some math. So this stream uh, will have some math in it. Um, the module itself, um, you can take a look at the PDF that was posted in uh, Mod Ideas. Okay. So, what do I want to do? So first of all, I want to define myself a triangle. And for that triangle, I'm going to have three vertices. The first one, and by the way, I have a method called PT, which just takes three coordinates. This is just a shorthand. So I'm going to start at the origin. And then the, uh, this line here, the one that I marked in green, I'm actually going to make that vertical. I should have drawn it that way, so it would have been clearer. but you get the idea. 
So that will be 0, 0, 1. Uh, note that the first number is the x coordinate, which is left and right. The second number is the y, the y coordinate, which is into the module and out of the module. In other words, it's the direction you're looking at the module. And the third one is up and down on the module. So that's why it's the third number that becomes 1. And then the third uh, will be this one here. Now, how do we um, determine the coordinates of that? Well, in this case, we can draw a, a right angle triangle. And this time, I'm going to let me see if it's possible to rotate this so that the green line is actually vertical. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to draw some orangey lines. Let's draw something here, something here, right? And this is now a right angle, okay? And you can immediately see that this angle here is, of course, 90 degrees minus theta. I'm going to make that smaller. There you go. This is 90 de degrees, degrees minus theta. Um, and the uh, hypotenuse of that right angle triangle is, of course, h. So uh, that means that uh, the that means that the sine of that angle is going to be this side, which I'm going to call z, because it's going to be the z coordinate of our point divided by the hypotenuse, which is h, which means that z is equal to h times the sine of that angle, which is 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, so um, uh, let's calculate the angle, which is 360 divided by 7. Um, and now v3 is equal to, so the x coordinate is going to be negative because it's left of the origin point, h, uh, which is a value that I was, I was going to, I, I said I was going to start by making it a 1, I can still tweak that number later. Um, times the sine of 90 minus the angle. So once again, sine is a method that I defined myself. If you look at what it does, it just calls math.sine with the uh, calculation to uh, change it from degrees to radians. So I can work in degrees because I find that uh, more intuitive. Uh, zero and then uh, this one, uh, the, this, right, okay, this is the z coordinate. I'm an idiot. So this is actually the same but with cos. Uh, so minus h times sine, 90 minus angle, and astute viewers will have noticed this should be a positive h. So, now I'm just going to return a uh, single triangle consisting of just those three vertices, uh, just to see uh, what that will look like. So, if I run this code now, it will generate a file. Done. So I go to Unity, and you will see that the models directory now contains this button. If I double click this, it opens this uh, Windows 3D Builder thing. And as you can see, it is indeed a triangle. Don't be fooled by the other triangles you see. Those are just shadows. But that, that looks pretty much, um, no, it mm, doesn't really look spot on, because I, I expected one of the lines to be vertical. But let's see what it looks like when we put it on the module. So I'll just put that here. And I'll get rid of this weird duplication that it does. Let's apply that. Um, I will put, I will uh, reduce the size of it, and I will put this on on top of the module. Was it one five? It was one five. And then a little more. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So that's that's good. So I see what went wrong. What went wrong is um, our x coordinate is negative, but our uh, sorry. Oh, of course. The x coordinate. I made the x coordinate positive. Oh, okay, right. Let, let, let's see what happens if I make both positive. I'm going to bet that, yep, that looks the way that we wanted it to, even though. Okay, so that means that x and z are negative. They are sort of flipped. Um, I should have known that because, you know, I've been doing this for like ages and they are always flipped and it always confuses me, but. We're just going to deal with it. Let's see what you guys have to say. OK, you'll go check it out. That's fine. OK, so now if I were to create seven of these buttons, um, let's 
create a um, parent object for these, call it buttons, put the button in there, yeah, click apply, click apply somewhere, thank you. And um, actually, I think I want to move that coordinate to here so that I can control all of the buttons as we go. And then make one, two, three, four, five, six copies of it. Uh, call that call that button one, button two, button three, button four. Okay, Unity doesn't like me sometimes. Button five, button six. Apparently, F two to rename things doesn't always work. See, sometimes it just ah uh, okay, it ignores the key press if you press it too soon after a arrow key press. I need to try and remember that. Okay, now make all of these the same size. And this one, we are going to rotate about the y coordinate, 360 divided by 7. Okay, and then this one is 360 times 2. I think, you can, yeah, I can do that. Times 2, uh, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6. Hey Tim, we is vengeful. Hello, vengeful. How are you? Okay. So now you can see that by making both the sides equal to length one, we've actually created a heptagon. I should have thought of that. I could have thought of that, but I didn't. Okay, so let me change these sizes back to one and make this uh, 0.05, I guess. That's too small. Let's make it 0.07, 0 .08, 0 0.08. That's probably still a little small, but I can still tweak it later. So, if we now simply change the age to, I don't know, 1.5, we'll instantly see a change. Now, does this look like the one we want? No. Um, well, actually, it does, kind of. Um, so, I guess we want a little bit less than uh, 1.5. Let's try 1.2. Okay. Doing okay, we know this is a Okay. So you say 0 0.75, so you, you're saying that h should be, should be smaller, even though here in this, oh, I am an idiot. Okay, so I, right, so here's what I did wrong. Um, I rotated this about, um, about this point, right? This is what I use as my center of rotation. But I shouldn't have, because the center of rotation should be the center of the graphic. So what I should do instead is I should move the whole thing off to the left a little and then do the rotation. Right, so um, I'm going to say uh, for each point, uh, add to the x coordinate negative, I don't know, 0.2 or something, and then turn that back into an array. And let's see what happens now. Bang. Okay, now they overlap. Hmm, why do they overlap? I'm not quite sure. Oh, because I moved them to the right instead of the left, because x once again is flipped. I'm going to add point 0.2 like this. Run that again. Okay, and now they don't touch anymore, which means that I was wrong about the kind of angle that we need. So the angle actually needs to be greater. Um, or does it? Okay, let's see what you guys have to say. Um, good old trying, okay. <laughs> All right, so. So the shapes do not match up with each other like they do in this diagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, the angle is definitely correct. I'm guessing I have to move it up instead of left. I think moving it left was... Uh, Ding ding, hell hell nine. <laughs> like I said, the shapes may need to be smaller. Yeah, yeah, I can still make uh, uh, size tweaks later. Okay, so that still didn't work. Okay, um, if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. Um, trying to figure this out. Why are they not joining up like they should? I think I get it. It's because 
Yeah, okay. It's because the, um, yeah, okay, I, I need, right, okay, I, I see why, but to explain why will take a moment, so let me see if I can. Um, what actually happened is, um, let's see, hmm, this doesn't let me draw a seven-pointed star, so I'm going to use Inkscape for this explanation. Is there a way you can check for whether or not each shape is contiguous with the rest? Well, if you do it properly in terms of mathematics, then that'll come out in the wash. Okay, so here's what actually happened. This is the uh, heptagon that is formed by the center in between those shapes. So this is the hole in the middle, okay? Uh, if you look at the, uh, at the angle made from the center point to any of these points. Uh, gosh, Inkscape, come on. I want stroke and no fill. Thank you. Okay, so if you look at this line, uh, you will notice what just happened there. Um, okay, if you look at this line, in fact, okay, maybe the best explanation is if I take a copy of this and explain it by way of uh, referring to this. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we've got our little heptagon in the middle. Now, if we look at this, this line that goes from the center point to here, then you will notice that... Um, then you will notice that this line here, which is the one that we used as a uh, sort of uh, anchor point. Uh, let's make that one green, for example, right? That line is now not perpendicular to this line. So, this line here represents the displacement. Uh, you know, if I move the thing to the left, then this is the sort of direction in which I moved it. But the green line is actually vertical in our model. So, what I have to do if I want the, um, let's make a group out of this and rotate this. If I want the green line to be vertical, I need that displacement line to be at, at an angle uh, like this. Now, what is that angle? Well, uh, it's going to be one half of uh, a seventh turn. So it's 360 divided by seven divided by two. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, okay, I just want to add another point which has the cosine of uh, 360 divided by seven divided by two, except I want that a double. And then zero and then the sine of 360 divided by 7 divided by 2. Now let's see if that works. Uh, this will be extreme now. They will sort of shoot outward. Yep, that's what I expected. So let's um, make that like 0.1 times that. And it's still not correct. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Someone needs to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, what am I doing wrong? Um, uh, yes, I made all of the code in Contain stuff, and it's all on GitHub. So if you want to take a look, then uh, go to github.com slash timwee slash Contain stuff. There you go. Everything's in here. Roger, thank you. Okay, so I need to think. How do I achieve this shape where they all match up perfectly? Um, okay. Maybe find the angle between the point on the triangle and the radius for the heptagon. The angle between the point on the triangle, what point on what triangle? You need to, you need to be a bit more specific. Um, between the point and the... That angle, yeah, that, isn't that the angle I just calculated? Oh, I see. Okay, so let's see if it's, uh, right, that angle is 360 divided by 7, isn't it? Let, let's see if that works. The problem is that each of the shapes try to converge into one bigger shape. They need to be able to have displacement in order to touch, but also form the shape. What? What? I have no idea what you're talking about, I'm afraid. Um, 
So where do I go from here? Um, I wonder, okay, so, um, hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, IF Beetle. Can you join the voice channel and talk to me? If you can, it would be cool uh, if you could explain to me how you created the SVG. Do you mind if I hop in? Go ahead. Go ahead and explain what you mean. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Hello? Okay, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing some rustling noises, but no actual, actual voice. Um, also, okay, so Tim, wait. Oh, there we go. I can hear something. Now, before you talk, um, I, I think that uh, my stream probably doesn't uh, record your voice. So I'm quickly going to... Uh... Oh, could you say something, they, please? They do hear my voice. They do. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yep, indeed. Discord is here. Okay. That is set up correctly. Okay, go ahead then. Explain. Okay, so the problem with what you're trying to do is that you're trying to create that heptagon in the center, correct? Not really. I'm trying to create each each one of these triangles, but I need to put it in the correct place so that a rotation no, I know. about I... the center of the hectagon will form the correct shape. Right. It's trying to. You're taking all those triangles in order to form the heptagon, correct? Taking all of these triangles in order to form the heptagon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So what you're doing is right now the triangles themselves are converging on one another in order to uh, just show conti or contiguity. The problem is that you don't have a displacement. That means that whenever you try to rotate them in or out, they'll all just go back to the center based on those points. What you need to do is to be able to have a displacement. You, like you see, you see on that. I do uh, have a displacement. This is my displacement here. It's point one in the direction of that angle. Right. But if you also notice, you know that line that you drew from the center to that one. Uh, Convergence point. Um, okay. Uh, if you look between that and the distance between that or that point and where the next point is, that's the exact same length. Is it? How do you know? Uh, just based on the fa just by inspection. It's either if if not the exact same, then slightly shorter. Right. Okay. How does that help us? Uh, it helps because you need to be able to have them line up in that way with that correct length between that center point and the next one to be able to create uh, the heptagon. I will How be right I do back. That? Pardon? that is what I'm trying to figure okay. out. I will, I will be right back. Okay. In the meantime, I will try something because I have a theory. I noticed that this uh, line is actually curving down, so um, I probably should make one of these coordinates negative. My instinct is to make the z-coordinate negative, but because everything is flipped, I'm going to make this one negative and take a look at that. Okay, that's closer to what I want. Let's make the other one negative as well. Okay, that's too much. Um, now, I have a s suspicion that uh, my original angle of half that was correct. So I'm just going to try out some things. Nope, that was not correct. What about this? Bingo. I did it. We did it, Reddit. So I'm betting that now I can freely change this number and they will still be contiguous. Yes. Okay. We've done it. Okay. I Thank you for your help. Back. Yep. Pardon? I just got back. You guys figured it out? Yeah, I did. Okay, um, cool. So what, what happened was that because this line curves downward, I should have just made the, the Z coordinate, which would be the Y coordinate in this picture, negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right. this is actually the displacement that I want. As you can see, I've, I made the x coordinate negative because, you know, as we've just discovered, everything is back to front here in this coordinate system. So uh, that's actually it looks it looks more not like the not like the origin logo, but it kind of looks like the uh, what's what's the labs from uh, uh, Aperture Portal? Signs. Yeah, yeah, Aperture yeah, Signs. Yeah, I already commented to that effect. Uh, yeah, I was I was something. I was replying to yeah. Mark Sam's comment. All oh, right. Okay. Well. Uh, if I was helpful in any way, uh... Thank, thank you for your help. Yeah. All right. All right. I shall see you around. Yep. I'll put you Yep. Bye. Thank you. Um...
Okay, so I think we want the spikes to um, sort of uh, come out more. So I'm going to increase the size of H from 1.2 to maybe 1.4. Let's see what that looks like. It looks like, oh. Um, ah, okay. So at the, m I'm trying, <laughs> okay, so if I take a look, you know, I'll give one of these a different uh, color for now so that I can see, oh, it changes all of them. Come on, let's create a new material. Create a uh, material. There it is. Uh, for the um, temporary. Let's just call it temporary. Let's make it the diffuse tint that we should use for Katane. Make it blue, because I like blue. Um, and give only one of them that material, which we do here. Temporary. There you go. Now, now I can see one of those triangles. Now you can also see that the vertical line is on the right which is also an artifact of the fact that the coordinate system is back to front, right? So um, when I change H, the length that I'm actually changing is this one here, the diagonal one, not the vertical one. So if we look at this here again, um, that line is actually longer than uh, the, the, the line for the others. So I'm going to make it uh, bigger, 1.7. And now it looks, it still doesn't really look like they, it's so hard to replicate this. Let me change that back to what it was, it was 1.2. Is this an actual mirror image of this? Yeah, I think it looks pretty close to a mirror image. Maybe if I make it slightly less than 1.2, like maybe 1.15. Okay, I'm going to go with this for now. In fact, even, even if it doesn't look exactly like this, I think it's close enough. Now. Um, none of these actually has a vertical line, um, so I'm actually just going to rotate the whole thing by something like maybe 10 degrees, so it's a bit more sort of wonky placed. Or maybe I want to make it 360 divided by 2 divided by, divided by 7 divided by 2, which is 25 degrees. Okay, that works. Um, uh yeah no now this wall here is no okay so i don't want that i'm gonna i'm gonna make it a random you know 10 degrees is not a multiple of 360 over 7 or, or neither is that a multiple of 10 so you know that gives it a nice sort of wonky angle okay so the next thing i want to do is i want these buttons to sort of bulge out i don't want them to be flat uh, triangles i want them to have a certain three-dimensionality to them kind of like the buttons on Silent screams um, okay, um, you know, it, it needs to be flipped in order to replicate this view, yes, but actually I'm happy with this view, so I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to flip the SVG instead. I'm sure if Beetle will be fine with that, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a minor thing. Uh, also, these buttons are now numbered in clockwise order, which is what I want, so, sure, thank you. Okay, now I've been talking continuously for a while, so let me quickly um, get a quick drink here before I... Uh, while I do that, I can reveal to you... In fact, let me just uh, go to... No. When I did Simon Screams, right, I wanted uh, a model for the buttons, obviously. Here is the code for the buttons on uh, Simon Screams. Uh, if you look closely, you will notice that uh, the word Bezier comes up a few times, and in particular, we have a method here called Bezier Patch. I will explain to you in a second what a Bezier Patch is. In fact, I will start by explaining what a Bezier Curve is, and then I will explain how to extend that to a Bezier Patch. Uh, here we go. Let me just quickly drink something. My, my throat is really dry right now. Maybe I should have prepared this before the stream, but who cares? If you're watching in the, uh, you know, the after stream recording, go ahead and fast forward. Mm. Unicode characters and identifiers. Um, fun fact, it is not actually possible to, to name an identifier without using any Unicode characters. People always use the word Unicode characters to mean non-ASCII characters, but that's kind of like using the word 
uh, international to mean non-American. You know, it's it's nonsense because from the point of view of a non-American, of course, America is international. So similarly, all le letters, all characters are Unicode, including the normal ones. Otherwise, it wouldn't be uni as in universal. <laughs> okay, so for our Bezier patch, oh yeah, I was going to explain what a Bezier patch even is. Okay, so let's get rid of this because we've solved that. So let me start by explaining what a Bezier curve is. Here in uh, Paint.net, Paint.net actually allows you to draw Bezier lines. If you draw a line and then you can manipulate these two, oh, that's not actually a Bezier, that's a, uh, what's that called? It's a spline, isn't it? Okay, I have to keep pressing F1 instead of escape. Yeah, okay, um, I'm going to uh, explain this differently. So let's say I wanted a curve that goes something like this. Okay. Some, something like this. Let's say I wanted this curve. So what Bezier curves do is they say, well, let's define first of all the uh, beginning and end, of course. So we have a start point and an end point. And we know approximately in which direction we want the line to sort of exit this point and in which direction we want it to exit that point. So what we do now is we'll draw a little greenish thing here. So we want that point, uh, we want the curve to exit that point in this kind of direction, approximately, and this point in that kind of direction, approximately. So what we now do is we actually just output, not output, input, this point and that point. And these are called the two control points. Okay, so with these four points, two endpoints and two control points, we can generate a curve. In fact, let me uh, use Inkscape again because I just realized that Inkscape uses Bezier curves. So if I do this uh, and give it a stroke and uh, make the stroke a bit visible, let's make it 10 or something uh, and make it, you know, make it more blue, please. I want blue. I want a nice, oh, thank you. That is cool. I love blue. I love me some nice little blue. So. What I can do here is I can edit this curve. I can uh, press that. Uh, I can press that. There you go. See, these are the two control points. So as I move these control points around, you can see how the curve changes. Okay. If these control points are on the same side of the curve, then you get this sort of bend. If, you, if they're on the opposite side of the curve, you get a sort of S shape like this. Also notice that even if the direction is the same, the length of that line also, also matters because the, the line defines not only the direction, but also you could say the speed or the force with which the line leaves the endpoint. So, so all four points matter. Okay, so that's a busier curve. And let's see what you have to say about that. Blue double d double die looks reminiscent of a sinusoid. Yeah, this one does, but you know, Bezier curves allow you to make all sorts of shapes. Uh, you, you, could even, you could even have something like this, where the lines sort of cross over each other. And if you do that, you know, extremely enough, then the uh, curve will loop back on itself. But we don't want that in our modeling. We want everything to be a solid surface, not a sort of, you know, we want it to be coherently defined. So, okay, now, what is a Bezier patch? Well, Let's imagine you have such a curve defined by these four points, and then you have another curve. Um, let, let's let's draw this other curve. Let's draw this other curve here. Uh, let me let me quickly think about how I want to explain this. Okay, so let's say we have another curve here, like this. Did, did that draw anything? Oh. Click, click enter. Okay, give that a stroke, make it 20, make it 10, because I think it was 10, there you go. And make this one green. I like this one green. Green is good. What just happened? Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so now I want to make that a busier curve, which I do by clicking this. And I can do this. And I did not want that to have a fill, so let's get rid of that. Okay. So here's a busier curve, here's a busier curve, here's another busier curve. 
Let's put that here. And then here is another Bezier curve. So now we have four separate Bezier curves, right? I think some of you can already guess where this is going. Okay, so if I have a, um, a circle, let's say, okay, I'm using that circle to, to, to mark some points. Okay, so we've got our control points, like maybe here. Uh, that's the control points for the green line. Then we've got the control points here for the blue line. Then we've got some control points here for the other green line and some control points here for the blue line. Now, what we, what we can do is we, we can just add another, you know, points here and here. And now you will notice that this whole thing actually forms a little bit of a 4x4 uh, um, four four rectangle of sorts. So let's... Ah, uh, oh, damn it. Not what I want. Okay, so we have... Oh, wow. Okay, we have a line of... <laughs> wow, I did not want that at all. <sighs> I want Inkscape. Um, yeah, let's make that red. Make that red. Thank you. Okay, so we have a line of four here. You'll we'll see. We have a line of four here. We have a line of four here. And another line, or row, I should say, a row of four here. Right? And similarly, we have a column of four here. Ah, that was bad. Let me redraw that. Let me also use a different color. Um, we have a column of four here. Make that, yeah, that's good. And then another one here. Like that, and another one here. Uh, no, another one here. One, two, three, four, like this. And then finally the last one. Okay, I think you get the idea. So we we have a two by two, sorry, four by four, um, array. Each of these points in that four by four array can be a three dimensional point. Okay. So instead of interpolating just between two endpoints to get a curve, we're now interpolating in two dimensions across this uh, array uh, to form a three-dimensional surface. OK, an infinite number of curves. Exactly. Yes. OK, it's not uh, four curves. It's it, it, it's a four by four rectangle, and if you look at the uh, four columns of that rectangle, you get four busier curves, and if you look at the four rows, you get four busier curves. But you know, each of the, I mean, the busier patch is just one thing, which has four endpoints, which are the corners. It has eight side points or edge points, which are the control points on the edges, and then four additional points in the middle, which are control points for the curvature of the whole thing. So, um, abstract hot dog, I like that. Mm. Okay, so now you know how a uh, busier patch works, but now we have a little bit of a problem because inherently busier patches are four by four rectangles. I mean, they have to, they don't have to be rectangles in 3D space, obviously, but, um, we have, we need four by four coordinates. You know, we, we actually ha we need to actually have four busier curves that form the edges of the patch. But the shapes that we have now are triangles. In Simon Screams, they were rectangles, so it was easier there. Hello, Blananas. That was very sudden indeed. Haha, <laughs> funny, funny. Okay, so here's what I'm actually going to do. The edges of the triangle are still going to be straight lines. Boink, 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 boink. Okay, so this is the edge of my triangle, and I'm going to make this blue because I like blue. Blue is cool. Yeah, I meant to scroll that. Okay, so this is the edges of our triangle. So where do we put our control points? Well, um, here's an idea I had, because we need this to be four by four, but um, we essentially have only three sides to play with. So we're going to cut the longest side, which, uh, if we look at Unity, is going to be uh, this one here, or or maybe this one. Yeah, they're actually the same length, aren't they? Okay, 1.15 is not that much longer than 1, but still, we're going to use that side. Okay, so, whoops, I want to go to Inkscape. There we go. So we can cut that into two. So we have, let's make that, uh, yeah, let's make, make that a black. 
Very cool. Thank you. Copy that. Okay, so we're going to uh, turn this into two curves, right? So these will be our four uh, corner points for the busier patch. Okay, and because the edges are going to be straight lines, we're going to put the outer control points on the very line so that, you know, they, they don't get curved. Here we go. Right, but now the four points that are supposed to go inside here, we can freely place them. Uh, mind if I join the voice channel? Um, go ahead. I mean, if you have something constructive to say, then obviously you're welcome. You know, but if not, then please remain muted. Um, okay, so um, we want to place four points somewhere in here. It doesn't really quite matter where. The trick is we're just going to, I mean, all of the points on the edge of this triangle are all going to be at zero y coordinate. You may remember that the middle coordinate here is always zero. It's zero here, and it's zero here, and it's zero here. But for those four points, that y coordinate is going to be bigger than zero, and that is what's going to give it this sort of bulgy look. And by the way, in Simon's screams, even the edges weren't all uh, straight lines, and they bulged out too. If you look closely, I mean, I could show you the model if you're interested. In fact, yeah, I, I think I am going to show you this because um, why am I doing a stream if not? Uh, for showing things. Hello, Mark Sam. Hello. I heard, I heard that. So I'm going to disable, um, you know, the transmission of Discord sounds to uh, the stream. Uh, I'm I'm sure you understand. Um, so here's the um, Sam screams. So if you look closely here, in fact, let me remove the um, component background. This one here. Oh, that is actually flatter than I thought it was. I have memories of it having a sort of mm, a different shape. So I guess I misremembered that, or maybe I changed it. Oh, well. Oh, wow, that actually looks very different from it, what it should do. Aha, uh -huh, I've actually found a bug in my uh, busy patch here. But nobody ever noticed that, because it's subtle enough that, no, you know, that, that it it's not noticeable in normal play. When you look at it from the top, uh, you don't see that. So I'm going to leave it. Or at least I'm going to leave it for now. I'm, uh, I, I might revisit that, actually, because that, that really irks me. If nobody notices it, then I don't care. Seems like each shape is four triangles instead of a single rectangle. Four triangles. Um. Oh, oh! Now you're talking about the flaps, the um, the sort of things that that go over the. I wasn't referring to those. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got our three coordinates now. The uh, now which one of these is v one? Um, yeah, I'm I'm going to rotate all of this, uh, so that this line is vertical. There we go. And this is. V one. Let's use um. What font do I like? I like trebuchet. Uh, so this is V one. This is V uh, two. No, this is V two. And this is V three. Okay, which means that we're going to um introduce another sort of point here, which for the sake of making this easy to work with, I'm going to call this one v2. I'm going to change this one to v3 and this one to v4 so they're in counterclockwise order so I know which is which. Um, <laughs> laser show, yes. Someone should make a Simon shout squeals or squawks. Um, um, Mario, aka um, AKA, what was his name? Uh, Turned Trove. Already came up with something that he called Simon Shouts. I suppose uh, you could take a look at mod ideas. Actually, I don't know if he posted it there publicly yet. But um, on with this. So, V1 is that. 
v2 is going to be halfway there, so it's that. Th then v3 is going to be that. And then v4 is going to be that. Now, hopefully, this should not change the shape of the... Uh, as you can see, it didn't change anything. So, now I want to create a busier patch. I'm, I'm really nervous because it's, uh, whew, there's a lot of mathematics involved in this <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the other one called? Uh, spin me. Okay. Var patch equals busier patch. Let's see. We have an overload here that simply takes <laughs> 16 parameters, well, 17, because then steps, uh, which, by the way, uh, I'm going to define here. For, for the moment, let's make it, I don't know, um, eight steps, because if few steps is enough, then, you know, that's good. So I'll, I'll make it that first. And then if I later find that that is too little, I can still change it. There's only one module who's, who, whose troll command is actually called troll. Let's, let's hope that people come up with more creative names than other modules. Okay, so let's see. Um, right, so we start with v1. And I'm going up the line to v2. So v1, um, and then I want... v1 plus v2, one third of that. So I'm going one third down the line, and then I go one v one plus v two times two thirds, um, and then we're at v two. So this is our first line. Um, let's see what people are saying in the chat. This isn't Twitch play. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, for the sake of the sanity of my viewers, um, I'm going to turn off this ding sound. Um, how do I do that? Uh, view. That was our ah, settings. There we go. Um, it's here under no highlight notification. There we go. Notifications, events. This one. Yep. There you go. Um, sound. Ding. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Save that. Actually, wait. Can I can I change the uh, audio device? That this is played through because if I can if I can do that, then I can make it so that I can hear it and you guys can't. But for now, um, let's carry on with the chat. Uh, sorry, with the stream. Okay, here we go. So, so we went from v1 to v2. Now the trip from v2 to v3, you know, in in this graphic, it looks like we're going sort of in the same direction. But because this is a two by two array. You know, this actually goes down the right side of this array. So we have something, 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 and then we have the first point on the way to v3, which is v2 plus v3 divided by 3. And then we have three more of these. Uh, and then we have v2 plus v3 times 2 over 3. And then we have three, three more of these, and then we have v3. So that's the last one. Now, down the left edge, we are going from v1 to v4. So this is v1 plus v4 over 3. This is v1 plus v4 times 2 over 3. Um, there, there is something wrong with this, isn't it? Um, yeah, why did I think that this would work? This is nonsense. I want 2 times that and 2 times that. This, this works much better. <laughs> In fact, this, this works at all. Because I want it uh, linearly interpolated between them. So let's do that, do that. Okay. Um, right, and then this is v4. And finally, between v4 and v3, we can easily interpolate. So this is 2 times v4 plus v3 divided by 3. v4 plus 2 times v3 divided by 3. And now we have all of the points that we wanted, except for the 4 in the middle. Now, these are the ones that we can freely choose. Um, woo, no ding. Yep, you're right. No ding. Haha. -ha. But I can still press a key and see the chat. Yes. Okay. So, 
where do we want these points? Well, here's what I'm going to do is, um, you see, if I take the three corner points, V1, V3, and V4, that will give me a sort of geometric center, which I'm going to mark in cyan here. There you go, or teal. Huh. Mario, teal. <laughs> right, and then this is just going to be sort of two-thirds of the way towards V3. This is going to be two-thirds of the way to, towards V4. Or maybe, or maybe I'll just make it mid midway. And this one midway to V2, and this one midway to V1. I think that should work. Um, so the four center points need to be equal to no, no, they can be anywhere. Uh, just like the just like the control points on a uh, Bezier curve can be anywhere. I mean, remember that. Um, remember that one of the Bezier curves is this, which is of course a straight line because all these points are in in a line. But then the next Bezier curve is de defined by these four points, two of which are the center points, are among the center points. Right, and then the next uh, the next Bezier curve after that is is these four points. No, whoops, is these four points. Right, and then the last one is this, which again is a straight line. Okay, so um, I was yeah, that's right. So the center point, which I'm just going to call C, I'm going to call v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by three. So that gives me the geometric center of these. Um, but now, I want to uh, move it up in the y direction. So for now, so that I can see the um, effect, I'm going to exaggerate it and give it, you know, the size of one, and it's just going to bulge out like whoa, huge. But uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, teal sign grew. <laughs> yeah, I do get it. Uh, but I, I prefer Bleen. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm more, more a Bleen person than Gru. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So, would it be... Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me move that up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sans. Thank you, Sans. Awesome. You are the second person ever to correct my mistake live on the stream. Well done. <laughs> so, now which of these four points should be which one? Well, uh, here we are part of the way between V1 and V4, so that's this point here. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing Sans' voice. Um, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, yeah, please mute unless you're, you have a question. Yeah, I'm muting the stream. No, I mean mute yourself, unless you have a question. Um, no. So, um, okay, so this is, this is that point there. And this is from V2 partway to the part... To, oh, so that's this point. Yeah, so the first one of those, this one, we want to be this one, so that's from the center to v1. So we're just going to say c plus v1 over 2. And then this one is uh, c plus v3 over 2. Then, um, nope, nope, v2, not v3, v2. And then this one here, this is on the way from this point to this point. So the first one is in the direction of v4. C plus V4, and the other one is in the direction of V3. So, okay, now, um, I still need to do this, don't I? So, um, here's what I'll do. Um, offset. Uh, I'm going to create a little function here which does this, this offsetting. Um, there, and then I'll just run all of these uh, through that. Actually, no, I don't need to do that here. I can I can do that at the end of the busier patch, which is in okay. So we have several arrays, and each array consists of points which we can offset. Make that an array. Make that an array, and bang. 
So that gives me a busier patch, which is a PT double array, and then we can just return that. Oops, I meant that. Okay. Uh, semicolon, thank you. Let's see what you guys have to say. Um, green, blue, yep. yep. Mainly because I'm like, I need both. Yep, that is correct. Did you guys know that uh, Japanese was originally one of those languages that has only one uh, word? No, return is correct because this is an array of arrays. Um, Japanese originally didn't have a word for blue for for blue and green separately, so they had just one word for blue green or grew. Uh, but since then, they have imported the English words blue and green, which in Japanese are buru and green. So um, so now they have all three of these words. They have buru and green, and then the other word, which I think is aohi, for the color in between blue and green, which depending on its saturation and lightness is anywhere between uh, teal and cyan or turquoise. So that's, that's quite fascinating. And by the way, this is also the reason why traffic lights in Japan are slightly more blue than green. I mean, the bottom light on the uh, traffic light is slightly more blue than green because in their color perception, that is a more fundamental color. Russian has a word for ocean grew and grass grew. No. That is not correct. Russian has an, an absolutely fine word for green, which is zhelyony. What you're thinking of is that Russian has two different blues, namely silny and uh, galuboy. Uh, silny is like a dark blue, like navy blue, and, uh, and uh, galuboy is more like light blue or sky blue. So there you go. So yeah, Russian doesn't have a single word for all of the colors that we call blue. So Russian is more differentiated, and the original Japanese before the invention of Gurin and Buru was less differentiated. Okay, so now let's run this. Who was the one who got him we started on linguistics? Um, N true. Actually, that's not completely true. I was already a linguistics fanatic before I met Entry, but it's due to Entry that I know quite a lot of these things. Uh, this just proves that Tim we know <laughs> everything now. I just know a shit ton of linguistics <laughs> for some reason. Um, okay, so let's see why this looks completely like not what I wanted. Aha! So it does actually, as you can see here from the outlines, it kind of has the shape that we were expecting. No, uh, except not really. Ah, I know why this is happening. Hehe. <laughs> what are the lottery numbers going to be tomorrow? Not a question of linguistics, I'm afraid. So go away. Okay. So what I did here inadvertently is instead of actually generating a patch, I generated several sort of vertical sheets from these uh, from this array. So this is not what I want, obviously. Because this, what this function does, busier patch, is it just returns you the points on the surface of the busy patch, not an actual object representing the busier patch. So for that, oh, for that I have to use my own function create map mesh. So I don't want it to be closed in any direction, and I, I guess for now I'll just pass that in and see what happens. Uh, and then this returns an I enumerable of vertex info because this one also calculates the normals. I was going to get to that later, but see that the thing is, um, from the mesh alone, Unity doesn't know which uh, sort of direction the each point on the face is pointing. It's a bit hard to explain without an example. I'll, I I guess I can explain this later, but for now let me just uh, take care of this. So for each of these points, after offsetting it, I'm just going to give it a normal. No, I'm going to give it a mesh info, and I'm going to say that all the normals should be averaged. There you go. Cannot implicitly... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is an... Oh, okay, I need to change the return type here, but there you go. Boink. Okay, now that looks a bit more patchy. Ah, but if you look at it from the top, it's invisible. But if you look at it from the bottom, you can see it. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because the entire patch is pointing in the wrong direction. Which means that I'm just going to put a dot reverse here. 
So one of the two dimensions of that uh, Bezier patch is going to get reversed, which changes the direction of every one of the little uh, rectangles inside of the patch. So there we go. There's our surface. Now, the reason that seems to sort of shimmer so weirdly is um, I don't actually know. I have no idea why it looks like that. But anyway, so you can see that it bulges out quite a lot, so I want to flatten it out a bit. Um, I'm going to change this to maybe 0.5. OK, that looks a bit more like what I wanted. OK, it looks like Ravio. <laughs> it looks like Ravioli. It looks like Ravio. <laughs> that is awesome. It looks like Ravioli. OK, I'm hungry now. You guys have done it. I'm hungry. OK. So why is this happening? Why does the normal look? OK, so here's my guess. The reason the normal looks like this is because, um, I mean, you can see that for, for the most part, the normals are correct. It's only on the edge that they are wrong. And I think that the reason this happens is because along the edge, ah, I, I know, I know, right? It's because, OK, I got it. This will be a bit hard to explain. Actually, I think I can explain this, so I'll explain this. OK, so here's what happens. Um, imagine you wanted to draw a button, OK? A button that has sort of this kind of shape, OK? Actually, let's have it be more like this. OK, so um, let's, uh, let's, let's make that a bit stronger, so like, like 10 or so. There you go. Um, uh, Not quite sure why those have right. Okay. Um. All right. So we have that button now. Um. Where would the normal point? Now the normal is a vector or arrow, if you will, which points away from the surface. Right. So this. So this would be the normal vector at this point. It would just uh, point straight up. Uh. Give that a stroke. Give it a stroke of maybe two, and give it a nope. Uh, nope, uh, that one. Yeah, there you go. So this is a normal vector. Now, what does the normal vector look like over here? Well, it looks almost the same, except that because it wants to uh, uh, face away from the surface of the button, it will be facing sort of slightly off like that. Okay, which means that here at the side of the button, uh, we're gonna have a normal vector that should point like this. Okay, so this is what we want. Now, why is that not what we're getting? Well, here, here's the reason. You see, when I made this function create mesh, uh, I needed to decide on whether this uh, should be uh, used for closed curves or open surfaces. What we are doing right now is an open surface, right? But it could also be used for a closed curve like this, right? The button could have a bottom. And I told it to take the average uh, of the uh, normal vector at every vertex so that it looks smooth. And the side effect of that is that here, at the edge of it, the normal vector points here, which is the average of this for the bottom and this for the top. So it'll point here, which is wrong. So we need to make it actually point like here. How do I do that? OK. Um, you see, this, this normal thing here is an enum, which has three different values. Average is the one I've been using. Mine means calculate the uh, normal of the very face that you're currently generating, right? So that's the one that we want, but only at the edge. And theirs would be the other side of the vertex. This is for cases where you want, I don't know, it's, it's a bit hard to explain. I use that pretty rarely. So I actually want mine, but I only want that in special, in, in certain cases. So uh, we have an x coordinate, we have a y coordinate. And these x and y coordinates are now indexes into the two-dimensional array of vertices on the Bezier patch, right? So um, let's see. So this one here, um, if x is 0 or x is, actually, wait. How about this? I'll do this. OK, so what I've done now is I've just made a, a separate variable for the video patch thing so that I have an array of arrays so I can access the length of that 
minus one. So at the edge, I want mine. In all other cases, I want average. There you go. So this, um, this, this, y, y, raw, zero, and this. Okay. What what do you guys have to say? I wish Tim Screen had contained emotes. Um, how how would I put them on? Um, if you guys know how to do that, then let me know. I'm going to put this window up here so I can see more, um, more of the text, and it doesn't inter interfere with these notifications. So if you know how to get these emotes onto my stream, stream, let me know. I'll I'll set that up after the stream, not now. So let's see what happens. Um, I bet that there's something wrong with us. Not just a missing semicolon. Um, this is gonna go horribly wrong. Oh my gosh, it went horribly right. Um, okay, there's only one tiny little thing here which is weird. And I'm betting that that is the vertex that is sort of halfway in between the two. Um, let me let me see if I can figure out how to solve that. Okay, I, I can't immediately think of a way to fix that, right? So I'm going to leave it for now. Partnership, okay. Well, in that case, sorry. No can do. Okay, so I think for the, for the moment this looks good. So um, here we go. This is our first preliminary look. Okay, so now the question is, do I want this to um, be semi-transparent, just like Simon Screams? Do I want this to have a hole in the module and be sort of inset? Um, I can revisit all of those decisions at some point later. It's not an S word. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave them sort of stuck on the surface of the... Um, I mean, I will improve the visuals later. So for now, let's, let's get the... Uh, um, programming right. Let, let, let's make a functional module. How do we do that? So first of all, I'm going to save this and uh, I save and I'm going to submit this all to uh, GitHub so that I have a copy of it. Ah, right. Here's another thing. You will notice that I have a materials directory here and a materials directory here. See, the thing is, every time one of these changes and Unity re-imports this, for some reason it automatically generates these materials, even if they're not used. So I'm going to delete these, okay? And I realize that the, they, they now turn pink. I was aware of that. So this one is now going to be our button material. But I'm going to name them after the colors, because we're going to have seven colors. So this one is going to be blue. And uh, we have a list of colors here. There we go. It's red, blue, green, yellow, magenta, cyan, white. If you don't mind IF, I'm going to reorder these. Um, I'm going to reorder these because I want red and then yellow and then green uh, and, then, and then cyan and then blue and then magenta and then white. Okay. Let's do that. So uh, I'm going to show this in Explorer and make one, two, three, four, five, six copies of it and call this one button. Okay, at this point the order doesn't matter. So blue, green, red, yellow, cyan, magenta, and white. Here we are. And I realize that the colors are going to be uh, randomized during the game, but for now I'm going to assign them in the... Oh, if they're randomized in the order, it doesn't even matter, ha. Huh? But anyway, so I'm going to reorder them in the order that I stated that I wanted them. So this one I'm going to make red, and then oops, this one uh, I'm going to make cyan, this one, oh wait, after red, I didn't want cyan after red, red, and then yellow and then green, and then cyan, and then blue, and then uh, magenta, 
no, you know what? I'm going to put white first and then have magenta next to uh, next to the red. Okay, so here we go. Blue, I think we can live with this blue. I mean, I haven't, I haven't experimented with it much, but yeah, I, th I think I'm happy with that blue. Let's make it not too much like cyan. So I'm going to just... Uh, I, yeah, there you go. That that looks like a good blue. Then um, cyan. Uh, let's make that absolutely cyan. That looks like a good cyan. That was quick. Um, then we want green. That is a nice little green. Uh, magenta. Magenta is up here in the spectrum. Okay, I want this to be, magenta is a bit hard to make it look sort of beautiful because, you know, if you make it too saturated, it looks too unnatural. But if you don't make it saturated enough, then it looks like pink, right? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it like this for now. I can still tweak this later. Let's do red down here. Okay. That's since we don't have an orange, we can afford making this slightly less uh, saturated. So I think that looks good. Let's have a white one, which is going to be like, you know, I think I'm going to make that a uh, tiny little bit like that. That's a bit bright. Okay, let's let's go with that. Um, then we have a yellow, which we get here. That is a bit too bright. I want that less bright. Yeah, that's good. I think the green is also a bit too bright. I'm going to reduce that. Okay. And here we go. Uh, Thunder uh, Raider. People have already done this. There are already postings in um, mod ideas and other places that uh, you know went through this thesaurus and came up with uh, lots of these. Okay, so here we go. Now these are the materials for the non-lit thing. The question is, do I want to have them flash up in a way similar to uh, how? Uh, Simon Screams does it because Simon Screams uses a uh, light source. Um, I mean, it has separate light sources, one over each color, but it, that doesn't matter because uh, only one of them is ever uh, active. Okay, you, you guys are starting to distract me a bit. So I'm going to uh, watch the chat for a moment and just take another sip of my drink because my uh, mouth is getting really dry again. Screws like nails or screws like sex. Thunder, I think you're being a bit, uh, you know, you're verging on the border of being inappropriate. So, um, so need to get some more juice. Ah, and yes, I mean juice, not 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 that kind of juice. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Radar. Okay, Simon Soup. <laughs> yeah, we don't actually have a Simon module with a, with a noun yet, like Simon Soup. I mean, some people have suggested something that would be Simon apostrophe S. For example, in so Simon Sings, one of the names that was floating around was Simon's Symphony. So we could still make it sort of more piano and not singing, but Sings just fits better with the theme of having verbs. So we went with Sings. Simon Strikes. So is that a module where you have to uh, you have to put in the wrong answer? Simon Shred. I'd say you can include a light source for each button underneath it. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds. That is what I'm doing in Simon Screams. Okay. So Simon sanitizes, huh?
Okay. Okay, so far so good. Oh no, I gave people ideas, damn it. Ah, I should not do that, I should know better. Okay, so if each of these buttons has a light source, like let's say we create one here, create a light. Do I want it to be a, I think it was a point light in Simon Screams, so let me uh, open Simon Screams and check what it was. Um, we have LEDs, no, um, keypad, button, light. It is a point light with a range of 0 0.02, a Y coordinate of 0 0.2, which is multiplied by this. That's all, oh, 0 0.08, okay. So 0 0.08 times 0 0.2, it's not, not very high up, is it? But we look at this, it's, it's still way above the button, right? I mean, the point is like here. The light source, right? So, um, okay. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this, uh, open that up, and then open Simon Shrieks. Okay, now our first button has a light source here. We're going to call that light one. Uh, the range was 0.2. Wait, was it? Oh, 0.02. That looks tiny. Um, and the color. Does the Simon Screams do the Simon Screams light have different colors, or are they all just white? What are these rhombuses below the buttons? Yeah. Um, they're not really supposed to be below the buttons. Uh, let me just quickly show you this. If I, if I actually run the uh, module, uh, right? See, now they're not uh, below the buttons. They are now to the side of the button. You see that? That's what they are. And now if I solve the, uh, the module, which I can do by uh, pressing red, purple, green. Oh my god getting sounds purple yellow orange okay this is what happens okay so that's what they are and now you've seen that um i want to go back to this you may need to adjust the number due to the fact that the buttons are different size and shape sounds I would not have thought of that. <laughs> I was trying to one of the yeah, mm -hmm. yeah well, okay. Yeah, I'm Blananas. I'm definitely not gonna call it laser show, right? But I might come up with something. I don't know. Um, are they? Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Uh, back to the uh, light source. Okay. So obviously we want to place that on the uh, button. Now, if I increase the Y coordinate, uh, that was, right, I actually wanted to increase the, uh, wait, this is, is this the red button? Uh, or is this the, uh, yes, this is the red button. So it is in fact the Z coordinate principally that we want to change. So we want this to be approximately here. That is approximately on top of the button. Maybe if we also move it a tiny little bit to the right. Something like this. Something like this. You know, now that I think about it, I can just uh, put my um, debugger here and take the coordinates of that center point. Uh, let's make that point 3, point 0.5, point 0.57. Oh. These numbers are nowhere near that. Um, that is a bit surprising. Um, it's pro. Oh. No. Oh. oh well. Ooh. Do you need SFX for shrieks? Or do you already have. I do not have any. 
if you want to um, provide some, you're welcome. But don't expect me to use them. You know, I have to like them first. And the person who came up with this module, because it's not my module idea that I'm inventing, they have to like it too. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at this from the side. Okay, so we have a light source here. I think this might be a bit high, so I'm going to take it down a little bit. And you can now see it sort of lit up a bit, but it's not really lit up very much. Let's see what the screenshot says. The screenshot says the intensity should be 8. And that looks a bit, a lot more like a lit light. A lit light. A light that is lit. Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. See, there, there, there is a sort of sweet spot where it is the most intense, but also not too... Uh, you get the idea. Um, maybe. We don't know. I mean, Simon Screams doesn't really sound like a scream either, except maybe on some uh, uh, metaphorical level. Okay, so this is our point. Um, Oh yeah, I wanted to check whether the colors in whether the light sources in uh, Simon Screams have colors. Let's end the debugger here. Um, keypad button light. Nope, they do not. At least this one does not. That one does not. As you can see, the color is white for all of them. So that's interesting, but uh, that makes my life a little easier. Okay. Right. So let's copy this to here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That goes here, 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 that goes here. That's called light 2, light 3. Let's do that. Ah. Light 5, light 6, light 7. Okay. And I want all of these lights uh, to have the same coordinates as the 0 0.06 and 0 0.8. 0 0.06 and 0 0.8. Bingo! Rotation, I think, should be zero for all of them. Um, oh, okay. I don't think we want the halos. Okay, so there we go. That's our light sources. Apply, save. Um, and I, I suppose for now I want these light sources to be turned off, uh, and I will turn them on in code. Okay, so that, that much for the modeling. I know that I still need to turn the buttons into actual clickable buttons, you know, KM selectables, but we'll get to that later. The next thing that I'm going to do is, uh, try across that line for you, is uh, open Visual Studio with the actual uh, project. And you will notice that I have this uh, template here. This was created by IF Beetle, uh, implemented by Timwe. There we go. And I want a uh, button scan selectable. I want a light source array. And yeah, I, th I think that's it already, huh? <laughs> OK. So obviously, the came selectable arrays I will not yet uh, assign. But the uh, lights, I'm totally going to assign. So let's take all of these lights and put them right here. Ta-da! Seven of them. And here we go. Apply, save. OK, so now I can, okay, I can actually close this Visual Studio because I want to use the other one. I'm just going to start a code routine and just call it flashing or whatever. And so for now, I'm just going to say while true, um, set uh, all of the lights uh, off. So uh, active is now um, enabled. 
Ah, yes. Okay, the enable equals false, and then light. Uh, of, um, so we have seven of them, but I think I'll just go light the length here just to be sure and enable that one. I want to um, wait maybe 0.1 seconds here and then maybe 0.7 seconds here or something. And now if I run this. Nothing is happening. Um, okay, uh, there is nothing in the console either. Oh, the light sources are indeed turning on and off. I don't know. That, did, did you see that? Did you see that? It does sometimes sort of flash up. So why why are we not seeing anything? That's that's interesting. I thought I thought we had that working. Okay, let's turn it off. Um, so if I, oh, oh, I'm, yep, I get it. Turn that off and that on. That is what we need. Okay, let's see if someone spotted that. Um, your game objects are disabled. Very good, Kate says you got it. Um, now if I run this, bingo. And now we have some flashing lights. The whole scene is is a little oversaturated. It's probably because the um, you know, the light that is provided by the test harness is a bit um harsh. I think this looks much more like the actual game. Yeah. You know what? I I'm tempted to actually change that in the test harness itself. Um, uh, light. Let's see where this light is created. It was called lamp, wasn't it? No, it was not called lamp. Uh, let's see if light exists as a. Ah, there we go. Game object light. Um, test light dot intensity equals point seven five f. Hmm, why is it compl? Ah, okay, it's not complaining anymore. Um. Yeah, you're right. White and cyan are a bit visible. So I'm actually going to make these buttons darker. But, you know, this wasn't so much an issue in Simon Screams, because in Simon Screams, all of these um, surfaces were uh, semi-transparent, right? And there was a hole, or there still is, a hole in the module so that the backing, which is actually black, uh, it, it shines through, is seen through it. Blue isn't flashing within the testing. Well, maybe it just didn't out of uh, coincidence, but uh, I, I assure you that it would sometimes. I mean, it's just by random, you know, by random chance you might not get blue. Okay, um, so let, let's just change the white a little bit, I guess. I'm actually tempted to change all of them, to be honest. The magenta is a bit bright as well. It's, uh, See about that. The red could also do a bit less. Yeah. Yellow definitely. There we go. Green. Yeah, that looks much better. I should have done that sooner. And cyan. Absolutely boink. There we go. Okay. Save. Run. There's your blue. Okay. I argue that all of these lights look good. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Now, there is one thing uh, that I haven't added yet. The module calls for a triangle that marks one of the colors. 
um, the SVG doesn't actually um, have that triangle in it. So I guess I can... Here's where the, that triangle is mentioned. So I guess I can place that anywhere. And I am actually tempted to place it on the inside rather than on the outside. Um, because that will allow me to make these uh, buttons just very slightly bigger, make them, you know, sort of fill the entire module. Like that. Uh, let's see if we rotate it slightly. I think I want to rotate it more. Oh, damn it. It's, uh, no, 10 is a really good choice. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Okay, so now I'm going to add a uh, um, a triangle object. Okay, so we know that the buttons are in a coordinate system where this thing here is a vertical line. Uh, it was IF um, Beetle who came up with the idea. Uh, what's the hardest module you've made to make? The one, the hardest that I've made um, is probably Hexamaze if you try to solve it without the uh, uh, interactive. But if you do count the interactive, then I don't know, maybe Simon Sense. A lot of people find that very hard. Um, Um, okay. Right. Okay. So you you guys can you guys can agree upon the SFX. Yeah, it, it's hard for me to say now what my hardest module is because I've played many of them uh, a lot. So you know I'm more familiar with them. Simon Sense is still a bit new, so I'm still you know getting used to it. Um. But quite a lot of my modules were difficult initially, which I want them to be because I want them to be a challenge, which unfortunately means that many of my modules end up being very difficult. Um, oh, hardest to make, not to solve. OK, that, that's a very good question. Well, Hexamaze is certainly uh, one up there because you know I had to implement hexagonal grids. I had to implement uh, this whole um, I, I implemented an algorithm that would generate me the hex, hexagonal maze, the big maze. Uh, you know, and that algorithm isn't in the module. The module just has all the walls hard-coded in it. But the algorithm is in contained stuff. You can take a look at it there. And um, it, it took me several iterations of that algorithm to, to get a, a good hexagonal maze. Um, but that may not have been the hardest. I mean, the animation that you just saw in Simon Screams, that was very, very hard for me to make because, you know, I'm not very good with three-dimensional geometry. So these rotations that have things close up, that was pretty difficult. Um, but um, I'm getting sidetracked. So I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to think about where that arrow needs to... Um, I suppose if I just create a sort of, yeah, I'm just going to create a uh, arrow. Um, let's go back to Katane stuff here. I'm just going to, it's just going to be an arrow head, but I'm going to call it arrow. It's literally just going to be a triangle. Oops. I want to generate a method. Thank you. And uh, let's give that a, thank you. And I'm going to return. An array of okay. So if the center is zero zero zero, and I want it to be sort of pointing up, and I don't want it to be on the center, so let's have the z coordinates be positive. So I want, for example, uh, point five zero point five. Then I want zero zero one, and then I want. Uh, Minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay. Right, and then for each of these points, I want to give them a normal, which is 0, 1, 0, and then make that into an array. Okay, what is it complaining? Oh, um, no. Um, oh, right, okay. Yield. 
Okay. Now, uh, let's put that arrow in here. Take that out. Yes. Delete that. Click apply and change the size of that, I guess. I'm a bit surprised that I'm not seeing it yet. Um, let's see if the scene shows it. Aha, uh -huh, that's where it is. Oh, of course. Um, no, the Y coordinate is correct. Um, right, maybe I need to change the material. Um, let's, uh, let's steal that material from here, put it in, in oops, put it in here and, uh, change it to this, make it black, blackish, I don't know, like this, but sort of pretty darn black. Um, hmm, it is still not showing. Oh, it's probably, probably because the, uh, Okay, you see, I'm always confused about whether the uh, uh, the polygons in my model should go clockwise or counterclockwise, which is double confusing because the uh, coordinates are back to front in many ways. So, okay, so here's our first arrow. Um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, zoom on. No. Oh, wow. this, this zooming is really inconvenient. Okay, so I want that arrow to be a little bigger. Um, the buttons all have the size one, so I think I'm gonna make this one and then uh, change the coordinates in the uh, uh, code. No, I I don't. Do I wanna? Oh, Jesus, this is so hard to decide. If I do this, it's much easier. Why don't I just do that? Um, okay, there we go. Okay, I want it to be a bit nearer the thing, so I'm gonna change the uh, this to um, 0.7, which is 0.2 more, so change this 1.2, but then I want the arrow to be a bit sort of, you know, pointier, so make it 1.5. And that looks cool. And then I'm going to rotate it negative 10 so that it points exactly up, except that's, that's not actually correct, wait. Um, right, if I rotate it uh, 360 divided by 7, there we go, then it points at red. Is that correct? Now if I times this by 2 and then by 3, there we go. This is how I can make it point at any of the colors. Perfect. Um, but it's not really perfect, is it? Um, well, I don't care. I think it's good enough. In fact, I can just, you know, sort of, um, um, yeah, I can just do this by eye and just say that, uh, there you go, 13 degrees makes it close enough to, to being parallel with that. So let's see what you guys have to say about this. Um, glow the color it's pointing at. Um, Honestly, no. I I think I like it more like this. I, I want it to be more like um I can't quite I can't quite um justify why I think so, but I'm I'm going to stick with this. Sorry. Okay. Um I think I want to make the arrow more uh, pointy. Uh more pointy still. So let's make this 0.75. Um and just make this 0.75 as well just to Okay, that's cool. Now that's a bit far up. Um, I suppose I can make it slightly smaller again, like 175. Okay, now I'm happy. Okay, so in the code for the module, which is this, um, Right, I need the arrow, so let's uh, give it transform of the arrow. Uh, go here. Wait for it to appear, there it is. Put the arrow here. Apply, save. 
Um, and then we'll just say arrow dot transform. No, it's already it's already a transform. Local Euler angles equals um. Yeah, it's zero zero zero, and this is negative thirteen plus three sixty divided by seven times uh any number between zero and seven. Uh oh yeah, sorry, that should be a float. Let's run this. Uh not run this in Visual C yeah. But let's go to Unity and run it here. And now the triangle points at cyan. Run it again. And now the triangle points at cyan. <laughs> Run it again. And now it points at magenta. Okay, I'm fairly confident that uh, this is correct. There we go. Yellow. Okay, so that is cool. Okay, I, I need to take another drink. I did not realize that my mouth would get so dry so quickly and I've only been streaming now for two hours. Okay. Okay, that was the end of the intermission. It is currently being judged by Beetle. Okay. Uh, oh, you mean the audio? Okay, we'll um, we'll take a listen to that later. Now, I need to make the buttons selectables, and in order for them to be selectable, they need a highlight. So I'm going to create the um, model for the highlight first, which is hopefully going to be easy. Button high. Oh come on! Button highlight. Thank you. Point. 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 And let's generate a method. Put that here. Now, um, this highlight is going to use many of those same uh, numbers here, right? Um, I guess I can get rid of this, but the highlight might use it. It certainly doesn't need. A, mat, uh, a, a, a patch. Probably don't need that either. I really only need the three vertices. I don't even need um, don't even need V two really. Um, so I want to you return uh, just this triangle. But then, oh yeah, and I I need to leave this in, don't I? Uh, or no, I wait. Um let's see do I have that oh yes um offset right I do have that offset function so I guess I'm actually going to make that a uh, private static so that here I can do offset So this would give me just a triangle that has exactly the same shape as the buttons, which means that it wouldn't be quite visible. Um, but I, I can show you what it would look like. So um, let's uh, create empty here. Let's call it highlight one. Let's give it a mesh filter, which is a button highlight, this one. And temporarily give it a mesh renderer, which it normally doesn't need, but I'm going to use it just to make it visible. Okay, um, now the button is here. Okay, so I can't currently see the highlight. This might be because it's uh, it's probably invisible, isn't it? Because it's uh, uh, the wrong way around. I can see it from the bot bottom. Yep, there we go. I can see it from the bottom. So let's turn that back to zero and let's change the order of things. Okay. 
So now you can kind of see the um the highlight, but you can see it's Z fighting with the button. Um, it's actually Z fighting with the module itself as well. Um, I'm actually a bit surprised that it's Z fighting with the corner of the button. I'm gonna have to take a look at that later. It's probably something to do with the uh, um, granularity of the busier patch. Uh, it might might be worth increasing the number of steps there, but I'll investigate that later. So what I want now is I want it to be bigger. So um, let's see. Let's go back to this um, diagram we had earlier. Um, because if I literally just scale the whole thing because you see v1 v3 v4 they, they're all offset from from the origin right the origin is like some, somewhere around here um so if i were to scale it all up then it would all scale towards the upper left and so it wouldn't encompass the whole button so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scale it about this po uh, point here which we already uh calculated here we have a c right so i'm going to do the following. I'm going to p minus uh, c. That gives me. So now the point is centered about c. Then I can multiply this by a factor like 1.1 or something, right? And then uh, I can offset that. Okay, let's see if that works. Oh, sorry, I need to um, plus c that again, don't I? So, uh, okay, you, you can see the outline is now more like what I want, uh, but for some reason it has become invisible again. Um, hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, so let, let's put that back to zero. Uh, 0 0.001, no, 0 0.05, 0 0.015, no, 0.15, hmm. Okay, not quite sure why it seems to expect to. Uh, hmm. Why? Why is it below the button? No, that can't be it, can it? That 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 the scaling actually moved it. No, it can't be because the the y coordinate is always zero. Oh, the center point. <sighs> Let's remove that. That explains that part. Okay, so now we want the highlight very slightly up so that it doesn't Z fight with the module. And then I think I want the uh, scaling factor to be a bit bigger 1.25 perhaps. Uh, let's take a look at that. Yep, I think that is a size I can live with. Okay. Uh, it now seems. Am I going insane? Because now it's no, it is. It is still Z height. Okay, fine. So let's uh, leave it at this. That that looks totally fine. Okay. Uh, do you want me to put this a face to do this? Um. Uh, l later, RPT. Uh, let's do that outside of the st uh, stream, or or you know we can actually we can do this within the stream, but when I'm done with things. Um, uh, yep, C sharp. It's C sharp. It's definitely C sharp. This is the advanced screams, <laughs> like screams is the advanced states and states is the advanced says. <laughs> um, okay then. Right, okay, so we don't want that highlight to be visible anymore, so I'm going to remove that uh, mesh renderer. Uh, no, not reset, remove, there we go. Um, and now every single one of these buttons is going to get one of those highlights. So, copy that, 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 make that a 7, make that a 6, make that a 5. And uh, let's make my, my life easier. Make that a 4, that a 3, that a 2. And uh, all of these get uh, this coordinate here. And 0 rotation, 0, and scale 1, 1, 1. And a KM highlightable component. 
scale one one one. Okay. Let's see, um, Simon screeches. That's another possible one that we could do in the future. Uh, shrieks, sings, states, screams, states, says. You 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 mentioned states twice. Whoops. You mentioned states twice. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Simon sleeps. Oh my gosh, that is an idea. We need a very quiet Simon module, which which is called Simon sleep. Um. No. Well, anyway, back to the module. So these are all the highlights. Oh, I gave them the wrong names. Uh huh. Okay. I guess that happens because they were in the wrong order in the list. Because Unity is, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, now I want all of these buttons to have a uh, KM selectable command. KM selectable, boink. Uh, they're all children of Simon, Simon Shrieks. Um, I'm going to have to create a collider for these because they are triangular. Um, I'm gonna do that in a second. Uh, default selectable index, no, that uh, everything else is fine. Now I need to set all the highlights. So this would be highlight one. Uh, in fact, let me set all of them to highlight one first because then it's easier to change them. Uh, okay, there we go. Now um, I need to. Okay, so now we've defined all of these game selectables, but the component itself doesn't know about them yet. That's what this children property here is for. Let's set that to seven. Uh, and let's put button one. Let's do this to prefill it. And then we have two, three, four, five. Uh, that was six, five, six, seven. Let's see what you guys have to say. Simon squeals. Are you a mod on Luke's? I, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Simon's shows. A module about what Simon watches on his Saturdays. You know what shows on on Saturdays, right, Raider? Um, question. Just try to install Visual Studio, but it says please uninstall 30 per Yeah, so I guess you'll have to do that. You have to uninstall the 32-bit version. Okay. Um, Um, oh, Raider, you don't know what I'm talking about. You haven't watched TV in a while. Okay, that's fair. Neither have I. But uh, it's good. Um, okay, so now they're all came selectables. They're all children. Now I also need to assign them to this buttons array. So let's uh, do that. Uh, click, click. Put them in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Apply, save. And while I'm at it, I think I also want the materials, uh, public material, button colors. Let's put that here. Okay, so now we have button colors here and we're gonna put these in there. And I'm gonna, I'm going to reorder these, but um, you know, Unity doesn't let me just drag and drop them. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to open the uh, um, Simon Shrieks assets, uh, Simon Shrieks prefab, uh, and look at button colors. There you go. Okay, so he, the, these are the materials that I just assigned. So I can, I can just turn, I can just move them around. Like for example. I put red there and bang it's at the top and I want um, uh, I want yellow next so let's move that here and then I want green and then cyan and then blue green cyan blue magenta white no I want white first and then magenta yep Whew. this is taking shape pretty quickly um 
Okay, so let's close that again. Okay, so colors, which is an integer. Private integer array colors equals uh, enumerable dot range zero seven to array and then shuffle. And of course, I don't have a shuffle method yet. Ah, so let's um add an existing item from Simon Screams assets. That one. Thank you. So now I have some of these functions that I use often. Let's call this Simon Shrieks. Um, I do want join string. Everything else I'm going to use later. So next off, I, I mean, I'm going to put it in when I need it. So everything else I'm going to get rid of. There you go. So now I can use this dot shuffle. So now we've got seven colors. So for each of these seven colors, which actually really I should uh, use this. Mm. Am I ever going to change it from seven? No, I, th I think I'm just going to hard code the seven because to be honest, I'm probably not going to change that number. So um, buttons, I mean buttons, get component uh, mesh renderer uh, dot material is equal to materials, which is button colors, uh, colors I. Okay, so now each button knows what color it is. Uh, and then we want to write the arrow, right? the uh, private int arrow. Um, arrow equals that. Oops, arrow, that. Okay, so the arrow could be anywhere, and then we put the arrow in the right location. Um, and then we start flashing. Okay, so now the buttons will be in random order. I'm, I'm going to hook up the um, uh, on interact as well. Now, here, here's an interesting thing. Um, a lot of, um, I mean, the, uh, the common wisdom is at this point here to go plus equals and then delegate, you know, and then uh, return false, and then to have your, uh, your code here. But one issue with this now is that this variable i, because it's a for variable, you know, if I were to, oops, uh, if I were to actually use that variable here, let, let's actually try that. So we have Simon Shrieks number zero, uh, button number that. Okay, so we have a module ID and i. So if I use i now, so you would think that this would output the number of the button that I've pressed. Um, and the buttons are, of course, numbered from 0 to 6, because there are 7 of them and you start at 0, so 0 to 6. But you will find that when I click on them, it will always say button number 7. No matter which one I click on, it always says button number 7, right? Um, so uh, some people work around this by having an extra variable here. They call it like var j equals i. And then make sure that inside here you only use j. Right, but I find that dumb for several reasons. Like, firstly, you have a separate variable, you know, that just copies a value, and you have to remember. This is the important part that uh, hampers the maintainability of this code. You have to remember inside this delegate to not use i and only use j. And the names i and j don't really tell you that. So here is what I do instead. Um, I create a method called uh, uh, button press handler or something like that, or get button press handler. This method will take uh, the button index as a parameter, which at this point I can make it an i, um, and then it returns the delegate from there. So why does that work? Well, instead of having the separate variable, it now becomes the parameter of the method. So it is uh, passed here and then saved here, so to speak. And then when the delegate is uh, invoked, it remembers the value that the parameter had when this method was called rather than the variable that the for loop has. So, right, the second thing is that instead of the plus equals, I tend to use equals because no one else is going to assign another delegate and you don't really want multiple delegates 
on it anyway. So you shouldn't really combine them. You should just assign the one that you want. I, that, that also reduces uh, complexity, code complexity. Okay, um, so now if I run this, it will show button number stuff. Come on, run this. So this should be button number five. There you go, button number five. This should be zero. No, it's, this is one. This is zero. This is two. And this is three. So that works. Um, now you will notice, some of you have probably noticed this, that as I move the mouse around, the highlights seem to sort of flash around. And you notice that when I'm here, the um, magenta one is highlighted, even though my mouse is clearly on the cyan one. So this is why I said I needed those colliders, because right now, what Unity does, I can show you this in the scene view here, um, because they don't have colliders on their own, um, it has actually assigned colliders to it, and you, will, you, you can see this sort of green box around it, okay? So this is a um, box that goes all the way around the, uh, the extent of the mesh, actually the highlight mesh, not the button mesh, which is why it's completely flat. But anyway, the point is you can see that it's a rectangle. It will always sort of make it a uh, rectangle shape. And, and that's why, so the, uh, if you look at the magenta one, right, that rectangle shape, easy to see here, extends way beyond the size of the uh, magenta button. It goes into the cyan one. So we are going to use a collider to avoid this issue and also to avoid the issue of, it, of having it completely flat. Because if it's completely flat, it turns out that VR users cannot click on these buttons. Because if it's completely flat, then your uh, pointer in, in VR, which is a pointer in 3D space, will never be inside of it. Okay, so here's how we're going to do a uh, collider. We're going to generate yet another mesh, mesh call it the button collider. And it's going to be kind of like the button highlight, except this time uh, we are not going to multiply this uh, by 1.25, which means that we, are, we can just do that. Instead, um, we are going to extrude. Oh, I only have extruded tests. I thought I had an actual, hang on, let me see what this does. Um, oh, extrude. There we go. I do have an extrude method, but I have to apply it to the uh, array. So let's do that dot extrude still doesn't what does it expect it expect oh okay it wants points which are two-dimensional points rather than pts which are three-dimensional points so um i'm going to um get rid of that first of all i'm going to make them all two-dimensional points for which i have this handy handy method called p so boink and boink and there you go. And I don't actually need P2, so I'm gonna remove that. I don't need, yeah, I do need, I do need H and I do need angle, so I'll, I'll leave all of that. And now these are points I can, right. Um, do I want to do the offsetting here? Yeah, I think I do. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this code. And uh, instead of a PT, this is now a point D. Um, that should do the trick. So now it's all two dimensional, which means that now I can use extrude. Apparently not. No, I need to do this. There you go. Extrude. Whew, okay, the depth. Now we we know that the height uh, of the um, buttons is one point one five. No nonsense. That's not the height. This is the height the uh, y coordinate, it's 0.5. I'm gonna make that 0.5. Um, include the back face, yes please. Uh, I don't really care about the normals, so let's do that. And that's an ienumerable, so, and that, that's an ienumerable of vertex info, so let's do that. What was that last parameter again? Flat side normals. I'm going to set that to true because it sounds like it means that the normals will be flat, which is kind of what I want. So what is it complaining about? The type or, oh, button highlight. This should be button collider. Thank you. Now let's run this. Done. 
Okay. Delete those materials that we never need. And now my button one, uh, click. Uh, in fact, all of the buttons, I'm going to give them a mesh collider. And all of these mesh colliders are going to have this mesh button collider. You can already see that it's this sort of prism shape, which is exactly like the button highlight, but extruded, which is exactly what we want. Um, we want these to be uh, triggers. And let's uh, look at the scene tab. And there you go. Now, this is clearly, clearly too tall. I am actually surprised that it's this tall. We did put the um, control points that far up, and yet the button doesn't reach that far up. That does sometimes happen in Bezier curves. I mean, you know, if you, um, you know, if you take a Bezier curve like, like this, let's say, and uh, give it, uh, no. Like that. Uh, let me get rid of all, all the other stuff here. Okay, so sometimes it's possible for a busier curve, uh, you know, if your control points are like here and here, right? Uh, let's remove the fill. Uh, you can clearly see that even though the control points go all the way off the page here, the um, curve only goes to this far. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening, except I didn't expect it to be this extreme. But it's not a big deal. We can change the um, extrusion factor to 0.25. And, whoa! And now it's much, much smaller than before. That is really weird. Hmm. Oh, is that because... Okay, I'm really confused now because the, the box disappeared entirely. Um, let me see that again, what happened when it was 0.5. Oh. It's completely disappeared. Um, oh. Oh, so for some reason it... Okay, so let's change it back to 0.25 and then let's play with that uh, little checkbox. Um, there you go. That looks much more like it. Okay, so this is approximately the extent of the button. Uh, we do want that on. And there we go. All of the buttons now have a triangular uh, region where you're allowed to sort of point at it and highlight it. Um, this is not it. This is not all, though, because we need to um, assign these colliders here. So I'm going to assign button one here, but then, of course, each of them needs to be itself. So button two, uh, button three, button four, button five, button six, and button seven. Okay, let's apply, save, and run. Hopefully now, as I move the mouse over it, there you go, it is now perfect as to, it, it perfectly sees which one I'm pointing at, and as soon as I, you know, reach out of the area of the button, it stops being highlighted. So that's what we want. There we go. Let's see what you guys have to say. Any tips for coding my own module, or should I just watch for a while? Well, you can certainly watch. You're welcome to watch. Um, my tip um, mostly would be that if, if you want to you know, learn how other modules are made, just look at them. The vast majority of them are open source. They're on GitHub. This one will be on GitHub, too. Um, Everything's on GitHub, and you can literally just clone the repository, open it in Unity, and play around with it. See how it works, and you know, change things. See how that changes things. So, okay, back to the game. Now that we have all of these highlights and everything, we can now properly click on the button. So now we need to implement the logic that um, relates to how to solve the module. So let's take another look at the manual. Five or more colors will flash in a sequence that grows longer with each stage. Using the figure on the next page, find the 5x5 five five square corresponding to the color that flashed first. With this as your starting point, move towards the squares of the colors that flashed in sequence. Move in the direction farthest in distance from that color. If that distance is equal, move diagonally. Okay. Um, 
this is a bit confusing, but the phrasing is technically unambiguous, so I think I'm going to keep the phrasing. But uh, if any of you are confused, I will explain it uh, um, in, in detail. But suffice it to say that we're going to have to use this grid here. Um, hey, um, IF Beetle, are you currently still watching? If you are, could you please send me um, an electronically readable copy of this square? Do you think you can do that quickly? Uh, quicker than I can type it up by hand. In the meantime, yes, okay, please do so. Do, uh, send it to me on Discord. In the meantime, uh, I'll try to implement some of the logic already. So we've already got the um, starting condition. So we have an arrow in a random position and colors in a random position. Uh, and now we want flashing colors. Private interray flashing colors. Okay. Um, so flashing colors is going to be, no, it's not in your range. This is going to be, uh, no, it is in your range. So we want about five colors, but we want it to grow longer with each stage. So shall we have, wait, it says uh, five or more colors. So does that mean that the first stage should already have five colors and then six and then seven or seven and then nine? Um, I think maybe if we start with just four and then six and then eight, because, you know, other otherwise it's maybe a lot. Um, a stage count, like, very, very good point. I should probably do that. Yes, I will probably do that. Um, okay, so let's um, take a look at this. Uh, if lethal, there you go. Oh, no message yet. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay then. Um, hurry up if beetle. Okay, so there will be three stages, right? So we we're gonna need a, a private in stage. Okay, and then I'm gonna say set stage one. Um. Okay, so the flashing colors. Now in that array, flashing colors. I'm just gonna put all of the colors. So for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it five, uh, four, six, eight, because I think five, six, five, seven, nine is a bit much. And if it's just five, six, seven, then there's not much to do in the second and third stage. Well, actually, there is, because you need to count through the entire square of colors. Colors, which is twenty-five colors. Um. Oh well. I'm I'm gonna make it four six eight. So I'm gonna decide on all eight colors straight away. Um, for each of these, uh, R and D dot uh, range zero seven. So we have uh, an array. There you go. Oops. Ah, <sighs> that's not what I meant. If beetle, but maybe I can copy. Nope, I cannot copy and paste this. Okay, I guess I'll have to type it up then. Um, uh, Gold dude, I'm not at 45 yet. Um, you got booted out of Discord. Hey, did you try to upload the Excel to uh, to our um private disc uh, private chat? Um. Yeah. Okay, so Gold Dude, um, about half of my modules uh, are someone else's idea. So, you know, it's not that I get so much inspiration. Ah, uh, there you go, it's there now. Okay, thank you. Sandwich fix table. Open this in Microsoft Excel. Okay, so this is the table, right? Uh, let me quickly check that it looks the same. Yeah, that looks the same. The corners are, are the same. Yep. Okay, so that that's what I want. So, private static. Um, I don't know character array. I guess let's make it a string array. Um, uh, grid equals that. Actually, let me transform that first. So these are all um, tabs. Let's change the tabs to commas. Let's change the new lines. Um, no, I I I'll leave the new lines just. So the code is a bit more readable. So here's our grid dot trim replace the R's 
then split at the new lines, and then each of these rows, split them at commas, and make that an array. Okay, so that will actually be a string array array. You know, I don't, I don't need the commas because they're all single characters. So I'll just do that. Um, and then I don't even need to split this. So, so this is literally all I need. Ta-da! <laughs> which means that, which means that I can actually literally just do this. Um, equals, um, do I have that? No, okay, let's do that. There you go. Then I don't need all of that splitting business. Okay. Read only. Okay. That makes sense. Now let's get rid of that. Okay, now set stage. Um, you know, I don't really need don't really need that. Let's just do that. Um, okay, now um, private int uh, colors to press and private int sub progress within the current stage. Okay. So I do actually want to set stage because I want that to calculate the uh, uh, the solution. So new stage, uh, stage equals new stage, uh, sub progress equals zero, and uh, solution. No, what did I? Uh, col colors to press um, equals well, I guess um, new list int. Okay. So the colors that flash. I need to translate the colors that, oh, wait, 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 colors that, maybe instead of flashing colors, I, it should be flashing buttons. Because then, it's much easier to count where in the clockwise order they are. Right. So now, these are actually button indexes rather than, oh yeah, and here also, so while true. Um, let, let's do the following. First of all, we turn the wall off, and then... Uh, for for each um, uh, flashing buttons dot link, we're gonna turn that light on, and then turn it off again. Right. Um, I want to copy that. Right, and then after that, we're gonna have a pause before repetition. Let's make that pause one point. 1.7 seconds, why not? No, actually, let's make 1.2. Okay, and now instead of this, this here, we want flashing button I. So now that they're indexed by the button, oh, um, right, colors to press, I suppose I can, I can just make that a list. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's see what you guys have to say. Variable with font. <laughs> Is that the first time someone commented on that? Yeah, Kate says, I know. I can read the error message. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. So, let's see. We're going to have a X and Y coordinate within the grid. Okay, so we start with um, uh, we start with the center of the five by five grid of the first flashing color. So, um, the um, okay, so um, the x coordinates of the colors are uh, two, eight. Um, two eight, and then two eight again, and then five. 
Okay, these are the x coordinates. The y coordinates are um, 2, 2, 5, 5, no, 8, 8, and then 5, 5, 5. Okay, so we start with uh, x's of um, uh, flashing buttons. Okay, so we have our flashing buttons and we have an arrow that points somewhere. So if the arrow points at, let's say, button number one, then we need to treat uh, flashing buttons one as zero, right? Because uh, the one that the arrow points at is zero in, in this list, right? And then the one after that is one in this list. So I need to subtract arrow, but then keep it between zero and six, okay? So I want flashing button zero plus uh seven minus arrow and then take that whole thing modulo seven i think that is correct right and then y is of course the same with y's okay um and now for each of the other uh flashing buttons starting at index 1, because we've already pro processed number 0. Oof was using lavatory. <laughs> Whatever. Um, okay. If... Okay, so I need to find out what the uh, x... Okay, so the, the difference in x coordinate is equal to... Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to call this nx for new x and ny for new y. Okay. Um, so the delta x is equal to uh, the absolute value of x minus nx and dy equals math.abs of y minus ny. Okay, I want these to be ints so I can put them side by side. Um, and I also want to know whether we're going left or right. So uh, the sine of x is equal to math dot uh, sine, yep, sine of uh, x minus nx. Because so that if nx is smaller, yeah, we want nx minus x. So that if nx is smaller, we want it to be negative because we're going to the left. Okay, sy is equal to math dot sine. Uh, n y minus y. There you go. Now, if dx is greater than dy, then uh, x plus equals uh, the sine of x. Else, if dx is less than dy, then y plus equal sy. Else, now we need to go in a diagonal. Um, uh, which which is literally just we just add that and that. Okay, so why don't we do this? If dx is greater or equal to y, and if it's less than or equal to y. Uh -huh. Clever! Okay. Now I claim that this will never move the square outside of the boundaries of where it should be. So um debug.log format um diamond shrieks um final square center module ID XY. Um You forgot to change the index of flashing buttons in the loop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Okay, thank you. That was uh, very good uh, that you spotted that. Now let's um, run this. Okay, so it's pointing at green. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight colors are flashing. But we don't really want eight to flash, do we? Um, let's see. What we actually want is stage times two plus two. So that for the first stage, it would be four and then six and then eight. I think this is what we want. Let's run that. Bingo. So we have green, 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 white. Okay, I'm actually just gonna... Uh, so we have green, which is the one clockwise, so it would be this square here. Um, this square here. There. Okay, this is perhaps easy to read. Um, and then we have the marked one. We're going only and only once in that direction. So the square is actually this one. R C Y B Y C B W. So we're looking at x coordinate is um, seven. So it should be seven two, right? Seven two. Let's see if it's seven two. And it says five five. That is not what I expected. You forgot to change? No, okay. One index stage counter. Do you want me to change that? Um, I mean, you, you're quite right. I, I don't usually, you know, I don't usually. So, okay. Let, let's change that to zero. So, um, here we actually want the same thing as before. So it's actually stage times two plus four. And then this is plus four. That's why we got 5, 5, because it was still going um, all the way. So let's try this. Okay, it was purple, blue, green, red. So we start with 3 clockwise, which is, um, which is this one down here. Purple, so blue, green, red. So it's 0, uh, 4, and 5. Okay, so we're here, and zero is the top left, so we're here, and then four, was it four and five? Which bad memory, yes it was, wasn't it green and then red, yes. So we're now going in the direction of uh, that, so that would be left, and then the direction of that, which is actually diagonal here. So now I expect the answer to be seven, six. Three six. Let's see. Zero one two three. Uh, two three. We start. We start with this one definitely. Okay, so I guess I'll have to output all of the calculations. So um, starting square after steps. Okay, let's see. Okay, it was cyan, red, blue, white. So that's five one six zero five one six zero five one six zero. So five means we're here. One means we're going up, five, one, six. Um, six is the center, so we're now going here. Five, one, six, zero, so now we're going left again. So I expect six, four. I'm getting four, four. Okay, it started at two, five, instead of, uh, hang on. Two, three, four, five. This is definitely number five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. It should have started at eight five. Um, but it started at two five. So let's see. Um, what's the arrow? I didn't log that. Oh, I get it. Okay, so the problem I think is that this. Yep. See, this is button number zero in the array. 
but the arrow, yeah. So we need to change the rotation of the arrow. The arrow is wrongly rotated. We just, you know, I'm just gonna wing it here and say arrow plus one. There you go. So if arrow is seven, then it'll actually make it, you know, 360 instead of zero, but I don't care. Because it comes out the same. Okay. So now we have one, uh, four, three, one, four, three, zero. One, four, three, zero. So one, uh, four means we're going left. Three means we're going down. Zero, zero means we're going left. So I expect six, three. Six, three. Yay! This is working. We did it, Reddit. We did it. Okay. So now it generates the correct uh, solution. Um, yeah, I think I want to put that here to, to the other variables. Now for the colors to press. Um, so uh, stage that square center. Stage plus one. Uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, what will happen if there is two of the same color in the sequence? Well, you can move two steps towards it, right? So, um, for example, if you're in the bottom right, like here, uh, and then this color here flashes twice, then you move left and then you move left again. If you're already at the center of the very one that flashed, then you just stay there. Then you just don't move at all. I mean, that's what the uh, calculation currently does because sine for both of them will be zero. Right. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Isn't there also a rule with the serial number vowel? Ooh. Um. Ah, only press the colors with an even number. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so that, I haven't gotten that far yet. So th we need to press the colored buttons in the order from least to most occurrences. Um, and then filter out which ones of them occur an even or odd number of times. If colors tie on occurrence, press the tied colors in the order of their first occurrence. So, I'm going to have... I'm, I'm still going to make this an interray because I'm going to have to um, uh, do things. So first of all, uh, c let's count the colors using a dictionary from int to int. No, actually I can make, I can make this an int array uh, indexed by color. So for, um, yeah, I want to call this variable x and now I can't. So I'm going to change this to uh, cx for center x and cy for center y. And now for x equals, um, uh, minus two, two, and for y, count colors of um, grid of, so we want the y first, which is cy plus y, and then cx plus x, uh, plus plus, except that this gives us a character, which is one of these. You know, so um, private static read only string uh, color names. Oops, names equals. Uh, I want. Okay, I'm just gonna color. I mean, I don't. It, the order in which I put them in the string is irrelevant. So I'm gonna put them in my favorite order, which is red, yellow, green, cyan, uh, blue, white, magenta. Okay. So um, now I'm going to say color names dot index of that. Okay, so now I've counted them. Okay, and now um, colors to press is equal to um, color names where now each color name has a character and an index, 
right? And um, so I let's see if the serial number contains a vowel or not a vowel, right? So we need to find out if it has a vowel. Um, right, let's just say var has vowel equals from uh, get serial number letters dot any a e i o u dot contains. Okay, so that gives me that tells me if there is a vowel. So um, if it has a vowel, only press the colors with an even number occurrence. So um, uh, count colors of uh, index percent two. Um, right, I can just do this. So if if we have a vowel, then it needs to be even, otherwise odd. Okay, so that gives me the colors that I need to press to array, and now I'm going to sort them. Um, oh god damn it, I also need to record the, yeah, I need to write var first occurrence equals new. And so for each color I'm going to um, uh, write so var um, I need I need to count the number of cells. Start counting at zero, and uh, add one. And now the first occurrence of this color is equal to cells. Okay, so that way. No, no, wait. That would count the last occurrence. Ah, that would count the last occurrence of each color. I want the first occurrence of each color also. I just randomly realized that this will count. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, press the colored buttons, like all of them, even the ones that occurred zero times, which is an even number of occurrences. So if the serial number does contain a vowel, then you will also have to press the ones that don't occur at all. Uh, interesting. Oh, I got disconnected. Um. I just made a version of the mod kit which allows you to control the edge work on the fake bomb to help with testing that you might want to check out. Well, I can just, you know, change the serial number in the test harness. Um, but thanks for the offer. Why did it send two messages? Oops, yeah, I don't know either. I mean, you, you did kind of, you know, add that. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I mean, apparently I had a uh, you know disconnect here briefly. Um, I don't, I don't. Is is the stream still fine? If if you can still see me and hear me, please let me know. If not, then stream's good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Whew. Now, all of the colors that occur in even or odd number of times, I need to sort them. Right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through them in reverse order. So I'm going to start at 2 and then do this. And also, I need to put Y up top and decrement and set. Right, so now it will go through them in reverse reading order. Right, yep. So this way, every time that it uh, uh, updates first occurrence, we'll have the actual first occurrence. Except that it will be a very high number for the first. So we, we will need to um, sort by the negative of that. So I guess what I'll do, I'll, I'll start with cells equal 25 and subtract that. There you go. I think that's the best way. Let's see. Um, ah, okay, it was a chat only disconnect. Okay, good. Right, so we've so can okay, the char char array oh color oh I see oh damn it um select uh, see now I have an issue so okay so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to enumerable dot range zero to seven where index count colors uh, index yeah so we don't actually need the uh, color names here. Yeah, we don't need them. So these are the colors to press, and then we need to sort that by. Uh, we have a uh, overload here. There, comparison. 
uh, let's see, comparison, comparison. Okay, that takes two values and presumably expects the plus one minus one. So um, p1, p2, or let's call it v for value. Okay, so if, um, so first of all, we need to sort by the, not the amount of occurrence, right? So count colors. So if count colors v1 greater, count colors v2, uh, then, then we return one. Else, if it's less than that, we return minus one. Else, if first occurrence of v1 is greater than first occurrence of v2, uh, return one. Else, if first occurrence of v1 is less than first, then return minus one. Else, return zero. Now, ideally, this. Oops, Ideally, this should never happen because the first occurrence is always going to be different. So either that or that is going to fire, but I don't care. I'm going to leave it like this. Um, I want to compactify this. So uh, if this is the case, then one else. If this is the case, then minus one else. If this is the case, then one else. If this is the case, then minus one else zero. There we go. <laughs> that that looks good. Okay, so now I want to uh, output the log um, stage colors to press. Um, make it that, and we're gonna have colors to press for each color. Um, we change it to color name so that we can see the color name and then join string with commas. Now let's see if, if we get the correct answer. Okay, so I'm gonna trust the square center now. So if the square center is seven, six, uh, then that would be here, this would be the B. So we're actually looking at these colors. Let's, uh, Take a look. Okay, so um, let's see. Blue, we have how many? Um, uh, can I somehow like brush? Uh, brush width 25. There. So we have blue, one, two, three, four, five, five. Then we have red, one, two, three, four, five also five, then we have white, two, then we have green, one, two, three, four, and I missed a white, so that's four, and white is one more. Uh, then we have yellow, which is one, two, three, and magenta is three, and cyan is two. Okay, then we look at the uh, serial number, it does not contain a vowel. So if it does not contain a vowel, um, ah, here, if this does not contain, press the colors with an odd number of occurrences. So we do not press green and we do not press cyan. Copy this, do not press that, do not press that. Uh, and then we want to press these first. So that should be it. White, yellow, magenta, blue, red. Not what I expected. Okay. Um, right. So I guess I I need a lot of logging then. So let's let's log a lot of stuff. So um, so do we have a vowel? Uh, oops. Uh, colors to press. Yeah, let's just copy and paste this. Right. Uh, 
Um, let's see if any of you have anything to say. Um, sharding thing, don't know what that means. Make an assert false instead of the return zero. <laughs> I could do that, but um, honestly, I, I really doubt that. Let's just see what happens. Okay, well, so this, this looks much more reasonable now. Um, okay, so let, let's actually output the square itself. So, um, uh, our square equals a uh, new string builder, and then square dot append, um, grid, well, literally that. Right. Okay, and then uh, I know that it's back to front because we're going going through it in backwards order. So um, square. Uh, I'm gonna put a new line here and say no. Actually, I don't need a new line. I'll I'll just yeah whatever. Uh, square dot to string dot reverse dot uh, join string. Ah, uh, it's very inefficient, but I don't care. Because it's just debug. Okay, so if the square center is four four, then we are uh, here. So the square should be m y c r y, and it liter literally just says g. It literally just says g. Uh, why did nobody notice this? That the minuses were missing here. Guys, I'm counting on you. This is the reason. This is the reason everything is falling apart in this world. No, just kidding. Um, okay, so now we have a square center of 5, 5, so it's actually the square here. So let's see, yellow. Let me take that uh, screenshot again. Let's uh, copy that, go to the... Okay, so yellow. One, two, three, four. Uh, then we have cyan, which is one, two, three, three. Then we have red, which is one, two, three, three. Then we have green, which is one, two, three, four, five. Uh, then we have blue, which is one, two, three, four. Then we have white, which is one and two. Then we have magenta, which is four. Okay, uh, do we have a vowel? KZ1BT, no, we do not have a vowel. Vowel is false, which means if we do not have a vowel, press the odd number of occurrences. So not this, not this, not this, and then the two goes on top. So it's white, cyan, red, green. It missed out the white. Because white is also even. Why did I miss that? Yep. Okay. So white is so this is actually correct. Cyan red green is the right answer. Cyan red green. Yay, module solved. Except it doesn't do anything yet when I click the buttons. So let's do that. Um let's see. Okay, so now I guess we can get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. So now we have the colors to press. I want this to be in the right order, so I'm just gonna put that here, change that to a two, change that to a one. And when you press the button, let's see. Um, so first of all, we want audio dot uh, play uh, game sound button press. I can change that later. Uh, to buttons I transform and uh, buttons I transform, no, not transform, add interaction punch point, point four. Are the generation algorithms for vanilla modules documented? Um, I don't know about documented, but KSS2 has a pretty um, deep understanding of them. Um, so you can probably ask him. Okay, now, um, if 
uh, colors to press. at the current sub progress is equal to um, not flashing buttons, but button, button colors the, the colors of the buttons uh, oh it's just colors right I call it colors yeah I'm gonna call that button colors because that's what I expected it to be so I'm gonna rename that so that is equal to the color of the button that I pressed then I want to increase the sub progress, and now if sub progress is equal to um, two times, uh, no, it is equal to uh, colors to press dot length, then set stage uh, stage plus one. Okay. Else uh, module dot handle strike. Um, you pre oh, I don't, don't need that. You pressed one when I expected two. Um, you pressed uh, the button color I when I expect uh, colors to press at the current sub progress. There you go. And then pressing one was correct. Okay, and now set stage. Um, let's see, if uh, stage is equal to 3, then module.handle pass return. Okay, so what is the distribution of the wire count in wires? That is a really good question. That's a really good question. What is the probability distribution of the wire count? Very good. Now I got DC twice. Hmm, okay. Um, all right. So let's see if I can play this module now. Stage one colors to press yellow, cyan, white. Yellow, cyan, white. Um, blue, magenta. Blue, magenta. Yay! So, stage two, square center, stage two colors to press. Um, you know, I think I do want to um, output the entire journey of the square. So, um, I'm gonna have uh, var journey is equal to string.format. No, it's gonna be a new string builder, first of all. And then journey, 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 okay, fine. Journey.append format. Um, center x, center y, and then here we're going to append that. Right, and then here we're just gonna say um, journey dot string, put that here, and change that to a one and that to a two. Square center eight eight seven seven eight eight seven seven. That's interesting. Okay, so that three six three six. Let's let's see. Uh, uh, three is this one, and six is that one. So yeah, three six three six. Yep, that is correct. It ends up at seven seven. Stage one colors to press green, white, yellow, green, white. Yellow. Stage two. Yeah. And then it continues this journey. Now we have red, cyan, green. Red, cyan, green. And then red, cyan, green again because it's. Yeah, <laughs> it ended up in the same place, uh, same answer. Okay. Now it continues flashing. I don't want it to continue flashing. So, um, while not. Uh, while stage less than three. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you, you want it to stop flashing as soon as you press a button and then resume flashing after a while if you stop pressing buttons. 
right? And then you want that to reset your in. Um, so, um, I'm going to say that all that's left now is just uh, small things like what I just mentioned. Um, so I think the, you know, the important parts are done. Um, the man, oh, we have an index out of range exception. Oh, well, um, doesn't matter. I'll take care of that later. So I think all the important things are done. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to end the stream here because, uh, the rest is going to be r relatively boring. Um, oh, I see why this happened. Yeah. Okay. Um, there you go. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm I'm going to finish up the rest tomorrow for now. I think I've um I've had enough and I'm sure that all of you have had enough because I've been streaming for four hours fifteen minutes now. So that that's been quite an experience. Thank you all for watching. Um Hey Tim, can I say something real quick? Make it snappy, as the crocodile say. <laughs> I'm going to clean up my desktop uh, while I wait for you. Let's close that and let's close that. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Don't save. Um, I suppose I don't need that either. Close without saving. I guess I don't need that either. Close without saving. Um, synonyms is meant to have 10 word pairs. Okay, that doesn't really relate to the uh, uh, topic of the stream, so we can talk about that uh, in in the chat. Uh, anyone is welcome to to join us in that chat. So, um, okay. So, thank you all for watching. That was good fun, and um, hopefully, Simon Shrieks will be available on the workshop soon. When uh, you know when all the uh, remaining kinks are are done. Until then, thank you all for watching. And I will see you another time. Goodbye.